I am catching up with the requests. Today we are analyzing WRC generations. Hi everyone, as always Patrick here. If you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on notifications, otherwise YouTube won't tell you if I posted anything. If you are new to the channel, make sure you watch until the very end and consider subscribing if you like it. Okay, WRC Generations. WRC Generations was developed by Kyloton or, or Kylophon, I don't know how to pronounce their name, and published by Nacon. Nacon. Again, I don't know how to pronounce that. In 2022, not too long ago, more specifically November 2022. So the game is only a few months old. And that's it, I have nothing else for the intro. You know the drill. Let's start with the graphics. Well, it's a game that was released in 2022. Yeah, I have nothing to say about the graphics. This looks like pretty much any game re that was released in 2022. You know, you know, good texture works, good effects, blah blah blah. Let's move on. Let's talk about the um, options, graphical options. I mean, I mean, they exist. Like I've said before, this is a game from 2022. Most things you would expect from a game released in 2022 is available, or the options are available in this game. Yeah, I don't have anything to say. And what about the stability? Well, the game didn't crash, didn't lag, didn't stutter, so that's all well and good. However, I am not playing at the highest uh, settings here. That's because, well, I tried playing at the highest settings and it lagged like crazy, but that's because um, my PC doesn't meet the recommended requirements, so that's why. I am playing this at the high settings, not ultra, not very high, just high. And even in, in, in high set, even at high settings, the game still looks good, like any game from 2022. So uh, yeah. That's all you need to know about the graphics. Let's talk about the story. You see, most games in 2022, or most racing games nowadays, have some sort of story. Some stories are good, some stories are bad. Some of them are somewhere in between. WRC Generations, and most WRC games for that matter, are exceptions to that rule, and... They don't have a story. WRC Generations is no exception. I mean, there is a career mode, there is a seasons mode, there are challenges, but there's no real story to be seen here. You can just, you know, play the game and have fun, I guess, depending on your point of view. So, the main takeaway from this section is, there's no story, whatsoever. Okay, it's time to talk about the gameplay. And, to be honest with you, this section will be rather short, because I don't have that much to say, actually. Okay, so let's start this section, I guess. Tell me, have you ever play have you played previous WRC games before this one? Oh, you did? Then you've played this one. Congratulations, you know what to expect from this game. Except not really, because WRC Generations tries to do something new with this series. Well, to be honest, this game has more old than new, but the new stuff is worth checking out. For example, if I remember correctly, the hybrid cars were a new feature. Yeah, hybrid cars, they, they have a cool mechanic. Uh, they have this uh, blue bar. Uh, once it, it, when, one, when it's full, uh, your acceleration is through the roof. If it's empty, your 
your car accelerates normally you know basic stuff but it does ma but it actually does matter in this game because you know it's a rally game you have tight courses except not every course is tight and yeah like i've said there's more old than new and i don't have much to say about the new stuff but then it's still worth checking out I think that's all I have to say when it comes to new stuff and old stuff. So yeah, I'm just gonna talk about the gameplay. And here I want to say one thing. You've probably noticed already that I'm flipping and sliding all over the place. That's because I played without, uh, without the traction control. So that's why my uh, footage isn't exactly the best footage of this game ever but I think it's still okay to watch I think but I will say this compared to other rally simulators like Dirt Rally 2.0 this game is a lot more manageable with its controls you don't really lose control all that much compared to Dirt Rally 2.0 and other WRC games for that matter and um, yeah that's the biggest difference it's just easier to play compared to other simulators aka you can turn off almost every single assist you have or if you really feel like it you can remove every single assist in this game and you will still have a lot of fun driving because like I said before it's the cars are easier to control sure all of them behave uh, differently but they be, mo all of those cars all of those cars share the same physics maybe with the exception of the hybrid cars but they're not that different either so yeah the driving, the handling, the physics are pretty good. WRC Generations also does some things that other rally simulators don't do. For example, in Dirt Rally 2.0, when you had a countdown to start, um, you could just hold, you just, you, you you could just hold the gas and nothing would happen. Here, if you hold the gas without um, holding the handbrake, uh, you will accidentally start too early and you will get a 10 second penalty. You also get 5 seconds penalty from other things like flipping or going off track or cutting. So yeah, those things are definitely not recommended. I actually like this penalty system, that's because, well, the game is punishing, but not incredibly punishing. Sure, if you do this all the time, like I did later in this footage, then it can get a bit annoying because you will, you will be always last regardless of the difficulty you're playing. But uh, yeah, this actually is well implemented. And I should also note that other WRC games also have the, this penalty system. Well, most of them anyway. The WRC games, games made by Milestone are an exception to this rule. WRC Generations is all about content. There is a lot more content compared to previous games. The previous WRC games of course there are cars from pretty much every season I mean it makes sense I mean the game is called WRC Generations so naturally there you should be able to have this many uh, this many cars the game also has many different tracks you can race on that's always good and what can I say? There's a lot of content in this game. There's something for everyone. I'm not saying that all of the content in this game is good, 
but in the game but it is solid the content is solid a lot of cars a lot of tracks and yeah i've just repeated myself sorry about that let me quickly go back to the cars well as i've said before the handling and the physics are much easier to handle compared to other rally simulators like Dirt Rally 2.0 and for me I know a lot of people will disagree with me here but for me this actually makes the game more fun you're not really pressured to do amazing I mean don't get me wrong WRC Generations has some difficult moments definitely like for example historical races which I really don't like they're too long they drag on and it's very easy to lose control and lose overall if you're not using the if you're not using assists so yeah I definitely don't like the historical races but other than that the handling is manageable the cars are well designed they have good uh, sound design uh, they uh, they handle well wait i said that before didn't i oh well i re i've repeated my uh, i'm known for repeating myself so i guess i'm just going to repeat myself even more but anyway and most cars be behave differently well they're not that different from each other but the difference is there uh, some of them have better better grip some of them have worse grip some of them are slidey some of them are twitchy um, you know how this works if you've played any WRC game before you know how this works and at the end of the day I can safely say that I actually had more fun with this handling compared to other games like Dirt Rally 2.0. The sense of speed in this game is also great. Cars aren't necessarily fast, but they sure do feel fast. Mainly that's because of the dynamic camera and dynamic FOV. If you don't know what dynamic FOV is, dynamic FOV changes the camera camera angle and it makes f combining those things creates a very good sense of speed and a very good experience the same things can be said for the tracks as well some of them uh, are pretty tight and hard to ma and hard to maneuver hard to learn but those tracks also have have a lot of segments where you have a where you can go in a straight line and that way you can build up a ton of speed this speed can be also increased if you're going downhill so those tracks have everything you can expect from a rally game tight courses long straights inclines declines yeah everything you can think of there are also many cool environmental features in this in this track in those tracks that also affect your driving like for example snow makes you more slippery ice also makes you more slippery you know like it should be and uh, yeah some tracks are um some try sometimes cars react diff differently depending on what kind of tires you have so for example if you have tires designed for snow they are going to be good for snow and nothing else if you have tires for asphalt they will they are going to be good on asphalt but they won't be good on any other surface you know just like basically every uh, rally slash wrc game does this and WRC Generations definitely does this aspect well. I do feel the I do feel I do feel uh, satisfied when I finally manage to complete the stage without making a mistake. 
and because of its handling well despite despite the fact that the handling is more manageable it's not that easy to drive as you can see I turn off the traction control and I'm having troubles I'm getting penalties all over the place and I'm just hitting everything and sliding out I know I know I said this before in the video but uh, please keep that in mind okay let me try to not repeat myself this time I should say that the handling the physics the cars are good the tracks and locations are very well designed and they do encourage the player to give it their all and also yeah yeah does I really like those aspects I think though I think the developers did a really good job let's quickly talk about the game modes there are three main ways to play the game the career mode the season mode and challenges let's start with the career mode because this is the main component of the game you have a calendar and on those calendar you can set many different uh, event types you can go to sleep you can uh, I don't know uh, increase your team improve your team you can uh, always practice you can take part in historical events you can build up your uh, squad your morale and yeah another thing that needs to be mentioned that needs to be mentioned sorry uh, it's um, the relations between you and your company you have those companies and you also have those uh, skill trees you know skill if you don't know skill trees are things that I absolutely uh, don't like in racing games but in WRC generations this aspect is done really well you have many different uh, skill trees and each one gives you a lot of benefits and I definitely recommend spending all all the points you can get because trust me without without this the racing becomes quite difficult but what else can I say the calendar well it's a good idea it's just time consuming there uh, there is a huge gap in between the official events and other activities like sleeping uh, historical events uh, building up your squad I just find it very time consuming like just let me race I don't want to I don't want to build up my squad I don't want to build up my morale I just want to race let me skip all of those well technically that game lets you skip those things by sleeping but then you lose a lot of points when it comes to uh, building your squad and more, more building up your morale and other things but still I just think it's tedious and I think this game would be better without it thankfully the season mode is a lot better in this aspect because you don't have to manage any of those things you just race that's it similar to the milestone WRC games you just pick a race and you just race simple as that I don't want to waste time on managing things <laughs> yeah for the last time let me race without those interruptions in between uh, on the other hand trainings are actually a good things because they can prepare you for you know other things that await that await for you that are waiting for you in the actual championship so yeah last but not least we have challenges and if you've played any racing game that has challenges you know what to expect you have a car you in the game gives you a car you have to you have to race against other car or complete an, a different objective and then you yeah well you complete the challenge that's it 
this works exactly the same way as in all the other racing games. There's nothing new or innovative about those challenges. Uh, if I had to rank those game modes, I would still put the career mode first because it's the main component of the, of the game. Even if I don't like the calendar thing, I, I still had a, a lot of fun racing on those, on the main events. Even some distractions are good, like for example, uh, driving someone else's car to appeal to the masses, and um, so even trainings are useful. I will put season second and then challenges third because they don't do any of anything innovative. Uh, let's go back to the seasons real quick. Technically speaking, uh, this should be first, but it isn't because um, I don't know. Once you've played the career mode, once you've completed career mode, you already know what to expect from season mode. And that's why I'm not exactly putting it in the first place. I really want to put it in the first place, but I just can't. It's more of the same. Yeah, and that's all I need to say about the game modes. I literally have nothing else to say. I've, to I've said everything I needed to say about the game modes. I've said everything I needed to say about the... The cars, the tracks, the handling, the physics. Uh, yeah, even though it, this wasn't, this isn't ex I didn't explain it in the best way possible. I hope this gives you the right idea of what to expect from WRC generations. Okay, time to talk about the bad stuff. Thankfully, there's not a lot to say because I actually enjoyed the game, and I would argue. Oh boy, I liked it more than Dirt Rally 2, mainly because of its access, because of its accessibility. I didn't really have any moments that frustrated me, or I didn't have to repeat uh, races that much, even though I didn't do really well. But still, I did enjoy the game more than other rally simulators. Um, but still, let's talk about the bad stuff. Like I've said before, I didn't like the calendar in the career mode. It's time consuming, it's boring, I just want to race, please let me race. Oh man. Uh, yeah, that's those are my main complaints about the career mode. Also, I don't really like managing my team and I just want to race but I can but I just cannot just race because then my team will not dislike me so I also have to do it it feels forced it feels like something you have to do and I want to be more free in this regard also I don't like the historical the historical events you have a historical car you have a historical track those just drag those tracks just drag on I feel I feel like I'm even though some of those stages are seven minutes long, sometimes less, sometimes more, I feel like I'm dr I'm driving for seven hours or more. They are just tedious, and I and when I'm playing career mode, I just avoid those instantly because I don't want to do those at all. Those are boring. Those are tedious. They are annoying. Combine this with Mm, terrible car handling of um, or in those events. Unless you're playing with traction control on, then then those um, ev events are okay. But I still don't want to play them. But I, but I still don't want to play them. When I see those events, I just want to groan. I just want to groan and do nothing else. I uh, I don't like this. Another problem. And because the game focuses so much on content, a lot of original things just are thrown out the window. 
Uh, and even with the new content, there's more old than new. I do like old content, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, when I see new content, I expect more from the new content. It's just... Let's just say I wanted more. In conclusion, WRC Generations is a fun game, and I definitely recommend this game to anyone. If you like simulators, then you will like this game. If you want something extreme, then something more extreme than Dirt Rally 2.0, well, you're, it's not going to be extreme, but I'm pretty sure you'll still have fun with the game. And uh, yeah, that's my that's my conclusion. I should also mention that. Uh, uh, the developers lost the license because Codemasters bought it from them. And if you don't know, Codemasters is now handled by EA, so... Oh boy! Let's hope the next game in the series or something new related to WRC will be also good, because... Let's be honest, when I hear the name EA, I don't have high hopes, but... You know what? Only time will tell. Uh, regardless, go get WRC Generations, and yeah, I hope you will have fun with this game. But that pretty much sums up everything I wanted to say in this analysis video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.